people discussing where your life headed? In today's reading, we will uncover the direction your life is taking. Whether you feel satisfied with your current situation or find yourself in a place where change is urgently needed, this reading will illuminate what lies ahead for you, where your life is moving, and the essential insights you should consider to manifest your ideal life. We have three groups for you to choose from, group number one, group number two, and group number three. Each group features a cup and a card that I've intuitively selected to help you connect with the group that resonates with you. I recommend closing your eyes and reflecting on the question, where is my life headed? Then, open your eyes. The group your gaze lands on first is the one meant for you. Take your time to choose, feel free to pause if you need it. If you find yourself drawn to more than one group, there may be valuable messages in those groups as well. Once you've made your selection, head to the timestamps in the pinned comment below and fast forward to the corresponding timestamp for your chosen group. Hi, group number one. You chose this cup and this card. If you selected this group, it seems you may be working too hard. You might be feeling overworked and caught in a cycle where you constantly feel the need to keep going without taking a break. You may have concerns about your stability, but your mind and body are in need of rest. The person depicted in this card has a lot of work ahead of them, yet their thoughts are elsewhere, perhaps dreaming of a vacation, a fun outing with friends, or spending quality time with family. This reflects your current situation quite well. That's your energy at play. The mirror shown in this card reflects the outside world. Perhaps your job requires you to sit for long hours each day or keeps you occupied for extended periods. You might find yourself working a lot on your laptop or caught in a routine that shifts between home and work. Your soul is craving more, it's seeking opportunities to explore the outside world, and your mind and body feel the same way. This card is a reminder that you deserve rest. Consider re-evaluating your schedule or daily and weekly routines. It's time to establish a new rhythm that allows for recharging. Take a day or a few days away from work, you can afford it. Things will be okay, so don't worry. Prioritizing your body and mind is essential for your well-being. I envision two people walking together, possibly a family member, partner, or friend. During this walk, pay close attention to what they say, as there will be a moment when they share something significant, an important detail you may have previously overlooked or weren't expecting. This revelation is likely to be positive and will make you feel appreciated and cared for. You definitely need to recharge your energy, as you seem quite tired. Consider incorporating more walks into your routine if that resonates with you. I also see you joining a group or social event soon. You might hear about it from a friend or come across an advertisement that piques your interest, prompting you to explore this new adventure. Your soul seems to be craving outdoor activities, fresh air, and the chance to observe people around you. If you tend to spend most of your time indoors, try to get outside more, even for a brief walk. It will elevate your mood and enhance your overall happiness. Additionally, I see you preparing to cut something, perhaps grass, paper, or hair. It's essential to exercise caution here. You might unintentionally cut an important document or end up cutting your hair too short. There may be an area in your yard that you should leave alone for a while. This suggests that you should reconsider whatever you're about to cut, as it may lead to regret. Take your time to think through this decision. For some, this could even signify cutting someone out of your life. You're being urged to pause and reflect before proceeding. I can see that your life is on an upward trajectory. With every step you take, you're making significant progress, following the right path and heeding valuable advice. Each year brings you closer to your goals and manifestations. However, it seems there are some eyes on you. I sense three individuals observing you from a distance. Some of them may be people you've lost touch with, yet they still feel connected to you. One of them is astonished to see you thriving without their presence. They didn't anticipate that you could flourish without them. This individual was a hindrance in your life, their energy blocking your success and soul's purpose. Now that they are no longer in your life, you are thriving. It's best to maintain your distance from this person, who embodies narcissistic energy. They could be a parent, partner, or friend and may have a round face. 
The second person is someone with a competitive feminine energy, who is curious about your life and wants to know what you're up to. While they may seem noisy, they are not a threat to you. The third person admires you deeply. They appreciate your strength, intelligence, and capabilities. You inspire them, and they aspire to be like you. They value your guidance and seek a place in your life. For some, this person may be younger than you. I also see a dolphin, symbolizing happiness and harmony. You are being guided toward your true path, and you are definitely not lost. You know what you want and what steps to take. Trust in your intuition, as it's always spot on. There's a powerful energy within you, and your spirit guides are proud of your journey and not worried about your path. You are making all the right moves and taking the appropriate steps. Happiness and harmony await you in the future. I envision you living in a place where you can gaze at the night stars or admire the city lights. The dark sky will be filled with countless little lights. I see you sharing a kiss with someone special. If you haven't met this person yet, you will soon encounter someone truly significant. If you've been single for a while, it's because you are destined to connect with a specific individual. Deep down, you've always known that there is someone special waiting for you. When you finally meet, an instant love will spark between you two, and the connection will feel strong from the very beginning. This person won't want to be apart from you after your encounter, and the same will hold true for you. It will feel like a reunion of souls from a past life rather than just a new connection, as if the bond has always existed. I see this lover in your future, and some of you may have already crossed paths with them. If what I described resonates, it's possible that you may have a child together. Additionally, I see you entering into an agreement with someone in the future, signing a contract that will mark the beginning of a significant new chapter in your life. This opportunity seems to have historical roots, possibly involving a property that has had previous owners. It could be a house or land, some of you will purchase it, while others may receive it as an inheritance. I also see you owning or managing three properties in the future, along with a fourth one that you will eventually sell. You are on your way to the top. Your ambition, hard work, and clear goals will pay off. I see you reaping the rewards of your efforts, allowing yourself to relax more in the future. Everything you are doing now is paving the way for a fulfilling future, so keep pushing forward, it's all worth it. I sense that you oscillate between light and dark energies. At times, your shadow self surfaces, bringing forth feelings of self-sabotage, anxiety, or moments when you're just not in the mood to be kind. Other times, your higher self shines through, allowing you to embrace a more positive outlook on life. This shift can occur even within the same day. It appears that anxiety and fear often trigger your shadow side. However, there's no need to worry. A bright future lies ahead for you. As long as you continue taking the right steps toward the future you wish to manifest, everything you desire is already within your reach. I can see that you're on the right path. There will come a time in your life when stability will become the dominant energy. You'll feel secure, which will significantly reduce your anxiety. I foresee a daily routine that nourishes your soul, stable finances, and no unpleasant surprises. This steady energy will last for a considerable period. After that, some sudden changes will arise that will require you to adapt. While these changes won't impact your finances, they will affect your relationships. I see you distancing yourself from certain family members, resulting in a division into two separate family groups rather than one large family. Let's explore this further with the cards. At the back of the deck, we have the Five of Swords. It indicates that someone in your life is envious of you, likely a family member though it could also be a friend. This person has witnessed your growth and success. They see you making the right moves toward a promising future and don't want to see you excel beyond them. You likely know who this person is. They have been in your life for a long time and may have been manipulative or even bullying towards you in the past. You are being encouraged to simply walk away from them. Engaging with this individual only fuels their negativity. Avoid discussing matters with them and refrain from getting involved in their petty drama. Preserve your energy and distance yourself. Remember, the less you say, the more you triumph. 
It's possible that a significant achievement or a change in your situation could provoke this person to create some drama. You are being urged to let go of the past and move forward. This energy no longer serves you, and it's time to release it. The imagery on this card reflects this message. Behind the figure is darkness, while ahead lies bright light. Your future is filled with potential, and you hold the key to unlock the blessings that await you. It's essential to move on from situations that have been holding you back for too long, causing you unnecessary anxiety and stress. This may involve certain people as well. Let them go and focus on what lies ahead. The universe has many wonderful things in store for you. Your life is heading toward a state of luxury. You're encouraged to embrace the finer things in life. I see you finding comfort in your future and creating something from scratch that will lead to your success. This could manifest as a new idea, a business venture, or possibly marrying into wealth, though that's not a requirement. I sense you making smart decisions, connecting with the right people, and building long-term financial stability. You will celebrate your accomplishments and feel proud of yourself and your achievements. I also see you surrounded by a supportive community of family and friends. You may have made wise investments, channeling your resources into the right areas that will yield returns beyond your expectations. The only thing standing in your way is your own mindset. You need to cultivate a stronger belief in yourself and shift your perspective on how you view yourself. Letting go of negative patterns and toxic, self-sabotaging thoughts from your past can be challenging, but you are capable of it. Remember, you are safe. No one can harm you. The perceived danger is merely a mental construct. Even if some people try to stir drama in your life, they lack power over you. The best response is to walk away and not engage with their negativity. It's all an illusion. You possess the power and control over your own life. Make the right choices and be willing to sacrifice what it takes to achieve your dreams. It seems you are already on this path. The first card you chose indicates that you've sacrificed leisure for work, but it's important not to overdo it. It's perfectly okay to have some fun and maintain a balance for your well-being, ensuring that your hard work remains productive. You are destined to thrive in your future. Many of you will find yourselves moving to a new country, signing contracts for new jobs, or launching businesses that fulfill you and meet all your needs, and then some. I'll draw some runes and charms for additional insights. The rune radio indicates that you will be traveling in the future, whether it be relocating to a different country or state. For some, this might involve road travel by car or train, but it doesn't have to be limited to that. This move will be tied to your career, studies, or work. Some of you may have already made this transition, while for others, it won't be long before it happens. Be prepared for things to start moving quickly in your life from here on out. Expect significant growth in your career or business as a result of this change. I'm sensing that it's time for you to prioritize yourself and your future. Stop sacrificing your well-being for the happiness of others, as this is a form of self-sabotage. You are embarking on a new beginning, and your heart chakra is open because you are feeling joyful. Some of you may be on the verge of falling in love or beginning a new relationship. You might even encounter someone from your past, a former partner or a situationship that ended on a disappointing note. This message is advising you to let them go. There is no future for you with that person. Even if you happen to run into them, manage your expectations. I don't see much passion left in that connection, rather, it appears to be fading. Instead, look forward to the new beginnings ahead of you. That's all the guidance I have for you today. I hope you found this reading helpful. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. It would mean a lot to me. Sending you love, and I look forward to seeing you in my next reading. Hello, group number two. You chose this cup and card. Those of you in this group possess a very active imagination. You've always had this trait, radiating a dreamy energy. You might find yourself spending more time in a fantasy world, lost in your thoughts rather than being fully present in the physical world. Your unique and vibrant imagination is a source of creativity, you have the soul of an artist. Without time to retreat into your thoughts, your creativity and happiness may diminish. I sense you need moments to sit or lie down, 
appearing inactive on the outside while your mind is busy visualizing and imagining. You have a powerful mind. Whatever you envision can become your reality. You might enjoy gazing at the clouds, finding it both relaxing and enlightening, and you likely possess a strong visual memory. You are at your happiest when you're in a relaxed, dreamy state. You might often find yourself crafting scenarios or rehearsing conversations in your mind, including arguments or reunions that haven't happened. Pay attention to your dreams, as they often hold deeper meanings. You're encouraged to channel your abundant creative energy and imagination into art or poetry, as creating art is your calling. This vivid imagination is a gift meant for expression, bringing you joy and potentially becoming a source of income. A significant decision about your career is on the horizon. While you may feel hesitant, this choice will lead to positive outcomes and propel your life forward. The path ahead is already open for you, shaped by interconnected events guiding you toward independence. You'll soon reconnect with someone from your past who still treasures a small item you gifted them, leading to a joyful reunion. Additionally, you'll reconnect with a friend from a past conflict, strengthening your bond. In your home, a guest may share a secret that prompts you to rethink a decision, offering new insights and deeper understanding. Hello, group number three. If you chose this cup and card, you may be feeling unstable or unsure about a specific situation in your life. It's as if you're trying to hold everything together, but it's not working, leaving you feeling defeated and unsupported. There may be people around you draining your energy, causing you to feel exhausted and anxious. You may have grown up in a toxic environment that affected your self-esteem and confidence, leading to patterns of staying in uncomfortable situations. Be cautious of someone offering you a proposal or advice, as their intentions may not be genuine. Instead, focus on a potential business partnership that could be profitable. You may soon find something unexpectedly joyful, like a package or letter that brings you happiness. Look out for lucky days on the calendar, specifically the 8th and 11th. I see you moving to a place that feels like home, which will bring you freedom and happiness. This period of darkness and discomfort is necessary for transformation, helping you recognize the need for change. A new opportunity will soon arise, leading to a significant transition in your life. Embrace this change and the possibilities it brings. Imagine if you were assured that whatever you did for God's glory would succeed, what would you undertake? Once you identify what that might be, the crucial question then becomes, why aren't you already pursuing it? Fear is often the greatest obstacle, and the Bible frequently reminds us to fear not. Fear can prevent us from following God's calling. To truly grow, we must confront our fears. So, do you value personal growth enough to face your fears, or are you letting your fear of failure keep you from moving forward, even if it means remaining stagnant? Growth inherently involves risk, and risk brings fear. The choice is clear. Confront your fear or avoid it and remain passive and stagnant. Often, we seek reassurance and a guarantee that everything will be all right before taking a leap, but God rarely provides that guarantee up front. True growth occurs when we are willing to take a step of faith without certainty. It's about trusting God and moving forward despite the uncertainty. To grow, you must push beyond your comfort zone. The fears you avoid become your boundaries. Think of fear as an invitation to evolve, to expand beyond your current limitations. It's a call to explore new possibilities and to grow in ways you haven't yet experienced. The Holy Spirit is most active when you step outside your familiar zone. You need to confront your fears now, rather than postponing them with promises of, someday, that never seem to materialize. Anything you're hesitant about or reluctant to do often gets deferred indefinitely, but it's essential to act today. God is telling us, you won't live forever. This means that real growth happens at the edge of your comfort zone. I firmly believe that growth always begins where your comfort ends, there's no convincing me otherwise. Every Sunday, I still feel uneasy standing up here, but I push through because growth and faith often lie beyond our comfort zones. Many people, driven by fear, busily stick to what's comfortable to avoid stepping out in faith. So. What would you undertake for God's glory if you knew it would succeed? The only way to find out is to take the leap. When you sense God calling you to something, 
the only way to confirm it is to act. Naturally, it must align with his word and it helps to seek counsel from fellow believers if you have doubts. But if you find yourself asking, what if it doesn't work, consider this, what if it does? When I was a teenager at camp, I remember standing at the back of the worship service when Coach Bully told me, boy, when the singing is over, I want you to preach. I was stunned. Preach? In 45 seconds? I asked. Yep, he replied. I told him, Coach, I've only been a Christian for a couple of years and I'm not comfortable speaking in front of people. He retorted, Comfortable? Did you think Daniel was comfortable in the lion's den? Or Paul and Silas in prison? Or Jesus on the cross? What should I talk about? I asked. Coach Lee simply said, Talk about Jesus. Talk about John 3 verse 16. Go. So, I did. I preached a sermon on John 3 verse 16, and a lot of kids came to faith. As I left the platform, Coach Lee pointed at me and said, When you teach the Bible, I see two things, you come alive, and they come alive. Then I had to sit down with my dad, who wasn't a believer at the time, and tell him I wasn't going to medical school, I was going to seminary. He asked, what seminary? I explained, it's preacher school. His response was, preacher school? You only work half a day a week and study one book. Why do you need a whole school for that? I shrugged and said, I don't know. They make you go. And I went ahead and did it. If you place your trust not in your circumstances, because honestly, who knows how things will turn out, but in him, that's what truly matters. We can't predict the future, right now, we only see things dimly. So how do you figure out what he wants you to do? My approach to understanding God's call is simple, pray, make your best guess, and take action. Pray, guess, and go. When making that guess, it's crucial to stay grounded in God's word and surrounded by his people. Follow what he tells you. In John chapter 3, Jesus compares following God's will to the wind. You can't see the wind itself, only its effects. You don't know where it's coming from or where it's going. You can feel it and observe how it changes things, but you never actually see the wind. It's only when you set sail and let the wind guide you that you experience its power and direction. If you could accomplish anything for the glory of God with the certainty of success, what would it be? Once you have an idea, don't just listen to the word but put it into action. It's time to move beyond merely hearing and start doing. I frequently remind people, especially the younger generation, which growth doesn't happen in comfort, it happens when we're stretched and challenged. Today, I believe this message is for me as well, God is pushing us out of our comfort zones. Scientists and psychologists agree that remaining in comfort zones stifles growth in all areas, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. For example, when an eaglet is developing, the parent eagle removes feathers from the nest to make the eaglet uncomfortable, encouraging it to spread its wings and learn to fly. Similarly, God uses discomfort in our lives to teach us to soar. Growth starts at the edge of your comfort zone. You need to let go of your comfort and be willing to step into the unknown. Success often comes from venturing into discomfort, so embrace the challenge of being uncomfortable. God's call isn't about staying in the familiar, it's about taking bold steps of faith. While he doesn't promise comfort, he does promise the strength to be courageous. Today, I'm here to urge you to step out of your comfort zone, the boat of comfort. God is calling you to move beyond your familiar boundaries. He wants to stretch you, help you grow, and push you to achieve more than you think possible. For some of you, God has given you a vision or dream, perhaps years or even decades ago, but you're still clinging to the safety of the boat because it's comfortable. Remember, God doesn't call you without also equipping you with the courage to act. It's time to leave the boat behind and pursue that dream. Just like Peter stepped out of the boat and began walking on water, you too need to take that first step. Some of you might be waiting for God to part the sea before you make your move, but God is saying, step out, and I will part the sea. Faith involves setting bold goals and trusting in a limitless God. 
It's about committing fully and believing that God is working behind the scenes to make things happen. We're not here to play it safe, we're here to take risks. I've always been drawn to adventures, and I encourage you to ask God for a bold vision. A dream of how you can align your life with his plan to make a significant impact in the world for his glory. Then, go after that dream with everything you've got and witness the results. It's easy to settle into a comfortable life with things that fall short of God's best for us. We know there's more potential within us, but we often hesitate to stretch ourselves or take risks. We worry about what might go wrong. What if the door doesn't open or the plan fails? We can become complacent with negative influences, unhealthy habits, or feelings of self-pity, always focusing on what we've missed or how we're disadvantaged. The danger of staying in our comfort zone is that we miss out on our true destiny. When God is calling you to a higher purpose, there will be a choice to make, comfort or calling. Will you stay where you are, avoiding challenges, discipline, and fear, or will you step out in faith, take a risk, and embrace the call? The decision is yours. If you're never stepping out of your comfort zone, you're not truly growing. Growth requires stretching your faith and pushing beyond your limits. The enemy will always try to convince you of what you can't do, but if you ignore those lies, you'll hear a quiet, encouraging voice that tells you what you can achieve. You might wonder, what if I try and fail? But consider this, what if you try and succeed? What if taking that step of faith elevates you to a new level and reveals abilities you never knew you had? What if you discover you can do things you've never done before, walk in freedom, lead with confidence, live a fulfilled life? Don't let the what-ifs discourage you from pursuing your destiny. Instead, flip them around. What if God's favor is upon you? What if unexpected opportunities arise? What if you overcome long-standing challenges? The key is to try because if you don't, you'll never know what's possible. Playing it safe offers no rewards. As Nelson Mandela said, there is no passion to be found playing small and settling for a life that's less than the one you're capable of living. Many of you have the potential to be used in incredible ways, but you hesitate to take the risk. Here's a practical challenge from this parable. Without taking risks for God, there are no rewards from Him. The best things in life come when you step out in faith and embrace the risk of trusting Him. God's greatest works in your life often happen in those moments when you say, I'm terrified to trust you with this, but I'm choosing to step out in faith anyway. If you're never willing to take risks, you won't accomplish much in this world. So rise up, take that risk, make that leap, and take action today. Don't let another day pass without moving forward. We aren't here just to read about others living adventurous lives, we're called to live them ourselves. Think about the irony of our lives, we become content with routines, binge watch TV shows about other people's lives, or play video games about adventures while staying stuck in our own safe zones. We scroll through social media, looking at others' lives instead of living our own. We're meant for adventure, but to embrace the adventure God has for us, we need to shift from routine to risk. Routine can easily become a rut, a series of actions done day in and day out without questioning their purpose or impact. As you approach the end of your life, Consider whether you've truly lived the life you were meant to, made the difference you were called to make, and fulfilled your true purpose. We often find ourselves stuck in ruts. When we stay in a routine long enough, it creates a rut, and if we remain in that rut too long, it can become a grave. Many people spend their lives trapped in this mundane cycle, simply existing rather than truly living. But Jesus tells us in John 10 verse 10 that he came to give us life in abundance, not a monotonous, predictable existence. So many of us are conditioned to stay safe, to avoid excitement, and to believe that we should not expect too much. This mindset often seeps into our faith, leading us to think, don't expect too much from God. Just stay safe and stick to the status quo. But living in fear and clinging to the safety of our controlled little world prevents us from stepping into the purpose God has for our lives. Faith requires risk. It means doing things we cannot accomplish on our own, things that require God's intervention. The enemy knows that if he can't take our souls, he can at least make us live safe, keeping us from stepping out in faith and fulfilling God's call on our lives. The Bible says that without faith, it's impossible to please God. 
If we want to please God, we need to embrace a life of risk and faith. To move forward, we must step out of our comfort zones and stop being content with just reading about other people's adventures. There's a story God wants you to live. What should truly scare us is not taking risks but the regret of reaching the end of our lives and realizing we never stepped out to do what God called us to do. The fear of missing out on our divine purpose and living a life of regret should be our greatest concern. Imagine you're walking through a dense fog where your vision is limited and every step is an act of trust. This is much like our walk with God, a journey through the unknown, relying solely on His guidance and not our limited perception. Today, I will share with you profound insights into walking by faith and not by sight or emotions. I am also going to pray a powerful prayer with you in the mighty name of Jesus, so watch until the end and open your hearts to receive the blessings of this prayer. My friends in this world, we are often tempted to rely on what we can see and feel. Yet, let us embrace the wisdom of Hebrews 11 verse 1, which declares, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. This profound truth anchors us in the midst of life's ever-changing tides. It calls us to place our trust in God's plan, even when it stretches beyond our understanding or visible horizon. Let us walk in faith, irrespective of the shifting sands of our circumstances and feelings. As we journey together, we will explore seven key insights that will help us navigate this path of faith. These insights will deepen our trust in the Lord and guide us in aligning our steps with His divine will. Number 1. Walking by faith, not your emotions. Life often presents us with a roller coaster of emotions, and you know what? But our emotions can be misleading, taking us on a path that deviates from God's plan. The story of Elijah in 1 Kings 19 offers a powerful lesson on this. After a significant victory at Mount Carmel, Elijah plunged into despair and fear due to Jezebel's threats. Despite having just witnessed God's mighty power, his emotions in that moment overshadowed his faith. This reminds us that even the strongest among us can falter if we lean too heavily on our emotional responses. My friends, in moments of emotional turmoil, let us hold on to the truth found in Psalm 56 verse 3, which says, Whenever I'm afraid, I will trust in you. This scripture not only addresses our fears, but also our broader emotional responses. It teaches us that our faith should not be swayed by the ever-changing tides of our emotions. Instead, we are called to place our trust and decisions in the steadfast love of God, not in the temporary whispers of our feelings. Walking by faith and not by emotions requires us to cultivate a deep sense of discernment and reliance on the Holy Spirit. It means that in moments of fear, anxiety, or even overwhelming joy, we pause and align these feelings with God's Word. It's about understanding that emotions are part of our human experience, but they should not be the compass that guides our decisions or our belief in God's promises. Therefore, as we navigate the challenges of life, let us seek wisdom and guidance from the Holy Spirit. Let us train ourselves to recognize when our emotions are leading us astray and stand in faith. Listen to the leading of the Holy Spirit and turn to prayer and scripture for truth in moments when our emotions threaten to overwhelm our faith. Let us remember Elijah and learn to rise above our immediate feelings, trusting in God's eternal plan and unfailing love. My friends, let us strive to walk by faith, grounded in the truth of God's word, rather than being swayed by the fleeting and often deceptive nature of our emotions. In doing so, we find stability and clarity anchored in the love and wisdom of our Heavenly Father. Number 2. Trusting in God's timing over our own The concept of time often perplexes us. We live in a world that revolves around schedules, deadlines, and immediate gratification. This fast-paced life can sometimes make the virtue of patience seem like a forgotten relic. Yet, in the realm of faith, time takes on a different dimension. As we ponder on the story of Noah, we see a man who operated not on conventional time, but on God's time. Building an ark with no cloud in the sky, Noah's faith was not rooted in what he could see or understand. It was anchored in the promises of God. In this context, Isaiah 55 verse 8 echoes profoundly, 
For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. This verse isn't just about God's higher thinking, but also about His perfect timing. Noah's steadfast obedience to a task that appeared illogical on the surface teaches us an invaluable lesson about the true nature of unwavering faith. Our journey is often marred by our impatience and our lack of trust in God's timing. We want things to happen now, forgetting that God's timeline is always perfect, even when it seems delayed by our standards. Trusting in God's timing means embracing a season of waiting. It involves understanding that our immediate desires may not align with God's ultimate plan for us. This waiting is not passive, it's an active, faithful anticipation. It's about preparing our hearts, nurturing our faith, and staying committed to God's course, even when the horizon seems distant. Noah's faithfulness during his season of waiting, building an ark amidst doubt and ridicule, is a testament to the strength that comes from trusting in God's timing. Therefore, as we navigate through our lives, let us seek to embody Noah's unwavering faith. When faced with decisions, big or small, let us pause and consider God's timing. This perspective shift is not about inaction. It's about aligning our actions with God's divine schedule. In moments of impatience and uncertainty, let us recall Noah's Ark, a symbol of trust and obedience in God's perfect timing. God guiding us to a deeper understanding of faith. Number three, surrendering personal ambitions to divine will. At times, our personal ambitions and dreams seem to chart our course. Yet, God's plan calls us to a different path. The story of Jonah vividly illustrates this struggle. Jonah was called to go to Nineveh, a task he initially ran from because it conflicted with his personal desires and prejudices. His journey, including the extraordinary experience inside the belly of a great fish, symbolizes the internal conflict we face when our plans clash with God's. As we reflect on Jonah's story, we are reminded of Proverbs 19 verse 21. There are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the Lord's counsel that will stand. This verse teaches us about the supremacy of God's will over our own ambitions. Jonah's eventual decision to obey God despite his initial reluctance demonstrates the importance of surrendering our plans to God trusting that his plans are not only different but better. Surrendering to God's will often mean stepping outside our comfort zones and confronting our deepest fears and prejudices. For Jonah, going to Nineveh was not just about a physical journey, but also a spiritual transformation. This act of surrender is not a sign of weakness, but of profound strength and faith, acknowledging that our personal ambitions must align with God's higher purpose. Therefore, in our lives, when we find our ambitions clashing with God's calm, let us remember Jonah's journey. It's a call to introspection and realignment, a reminder that our ultimate purpose is found not in the pursuit of our ambitions, but in aligning them with God's divine plan. Surrendering doesn't mean giving up on our dreams. It means reshaping them to fit into the grand narrative God has written for us. Number four, overcoming doubts with God's assurance. Doubts are a natural part of our faith journey. They challenge our beliefs and can lead to spiritual growth if navigated wisely. The story of Thomas, often labeled as Doubting Thomas, offers a unique perspective on this. After the resurrection of Jesus, Thomas struggled with doubt, unable to believe without seeing Jesus with his own eyes. His story is a reflection of our own moments of doubt, where we see tangible proof of God's presence and plan. In these moments, Jesus' words to Thomas resonate deeply, as recorded in John 20, verse 29, where he said, Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. This verse is not just a rebuke of doubt, but an invitation to a deeper faith, a faith that believes in God's plan even when it's not visibly evident. Thomas's eventual declaration of faith upon seeing Jesus reminds us that our doubts, when surrendered to God, can lead to a stronger conviction in his plan for us. Overcoming doubt requires an intentional cultivation of faith and trust in God. It involves seeking him through his word, prayer, and the fellowship of believers. Thomas's story teaches us that it's okay to have questions or uncertainties, but we should not let them distance us from God. Instead, we should bring them to him, allowing his truth to guide and reassure us. 
As we face our doubts, let's be encouraged by Thomas's journey from skepticism to faith. Let us embrace our doubts not as hindrances, but as stepping stones to a deeper understanding and trust in God's plan. In our quest for answers, let us remain open to the ways God reveals His will and purpose for our lives. Number 5. Embracing Transformation Through God's Guidance Personal transformation is often a key aspect of aligning with God's plan. The transformation of Saul to Paul is one of the most striking examples of this. Saul, initially a persecutor of Christians, experienced a radical transformation on the road to Damascus. This was not just a change of heart, but a complete redirection of his life's purpose. Guided by God's hand, Paul's transformation, as he later became known, was marked by a total surrender to God's will. As he states in Galatians 2 verse 20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. This profound declaration highlights the essence of embracing God's plan. It's about letting go of our old selves and allowing God to reshape our identity and purpose according to His divine will. Embracing transformation through God's guidance requires humility and a willingness to let go of our former ways. For Paul, this meant abandoning his previous beliefs and practices to fully embrace the teachings of Christ. This kind of transformation can be challenging, as it often requires us to step into unfamiliar territory and adopt new ways of thinking and living. Therefore, as we seek to align with God's plan, let us be open to the transformative work He wants to do in us. Like Paul, let us be willing to undergo the changes that come with following Christ. This transformation is not a loss of self, but a discovery of our true identity and purpose in God. It's a journey from who we are to who God intends us to be. Number 6. Persevering in Faith Despite Challenges The journey of faith is often marked by challenges and trials. These moments test our perseverance and commitment to God's plan. The story of the prophet Hosea is a profound example of unwavering faith amidst adversity. Hosea was called to marry an unfaithful woman, Gomer, as a symbol of God's love for an unfaithful Israel. This difficult path was not a reflection of personal failure, but a profound illustration of God's unwavering commitment and love. Hosea's life reminds us of James 1 verse 12, which says, Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. This verse highlights the virtue of perseverance. Enduring challenges in our faith journey is not about silently bearing pain, but also about remaining steadfast in our trust in God's plan. Even when it leads us through difficult and incomprehensible paths, persevering in faith requires us to look beyond our current struggles and focus on the greater purpose that God has for us. Hosea's unwavering commitment to God, despite the pain and humiliation he endured, serves as a powerful testament to the strength that comes from divine assurance. It's about understanding that our trials are not just obstacles, but opportunities for growth and deeper reliance on God. As we face our own challenges, let us draw inspiration from Hosea's perseverance. Let us remember that our trials are temporary, but the lessons and strength we gain from them have eternal significance. In times of hardship, let us cling to the promise of the crown of life, persevering in faith and trusting in the unfailing love and plan of God. Number 7. Walking in Faith, Not by Sight The essence of walking by faith is beautifully captured in the life of Abraham. Called to leave his homeland and go to an unknown land, Abraham's journey was marked by faith in God's promises, even when they seemed distant and unattainable. He believed in God's promise of a son despite his and Sarah's old age and was willing to sacrifice his promised son, Isaac, trusting in God's plan above his understanding. Abraham's life resonates with 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7, For we walk by faith, not by sight. This principle defines our Christian walk, a journey based not on visible evidence but on the assurance of God's promises. Abraham's willingness to step into the unknown Trusting in God's word sets a powerful example for us. Walking by faith, not by sight, means trusting in God's promises even when they defy our logic or timelines. 
It involves letting go of our need for visible proof and relying on the certainty of God's word. Abraham's journey, filled with ups and downs, was a testament to the fact that faith is not a straight path, but a series of steps taken in trust and obedience. Therefore, as we walk our own journey of faith, let us be inspired by Abraham's example. Let us embrace the uncertainties and challenges with faith, knowing that our sight is limited but God's vision is infinite. In every step, in every decision, let us walk by faith, holding on to the promises of God, assured that His plan for us is perfect and His timing is impeccable. Now, to all those within the sound of my voice, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our gracious and loving God. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, you are mighty and majestic. Your glory fills the heavens and the earth. You are the rock of ages, the great I am, the one who is, who is, and who is to come. Your wisdom is unsearchable, and your power is like no other. In your presence, every knee shall bow, and every tongue confess that you are Lord. I lift your name on high, for you are worthy of all glory, honor, and praise. I thank you, Father, for your manifold blessings in my life and in the lives of my loved ones. Thank you for your unfailing love, your boundless grace, and your merciful kindness that greets me each morning. Your faithfulness is my shield and buckler. Thank you for being my guide, my comforter, and my steadfast hope in times of uncertainty. Forgive me, Lord, for the times I have leaned on my understanding, for moments when my faith faltered and I walked by sight. I ask for your forgiveness, cleanse my heart from all unrighteousness. I also forgive those who have wronged me, releasing all resentment and hurt. For in forgiveness, there is freedom and peace. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare that I am walking by faith and not by sight. I rebuke every spirit of doubt, fear, and confusion. I bind any influence that contradicts your will for my life, and I ask for wisdom, clarity, and discernment. Lord, I trust in your unfailing provision. You are my provider and I hold on to your promise to supply all my needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Give me this day my daily bread and my daily benefits. Heavenly Father, I pray that your hand of healing reaches out to touch me and my loved ones, bringing restoration and wholeness in every area where we need your divine healing. I pray against every attack of the enemy, be it on our health, our minds, or our spirits. Protect us, Lord, from all harm and keep us under the shadow of your wings. Deliver us from all evil and lead us away from temptation. Lord, I pray for your blessings upon my life and the lives of my loved ones. As I say this prayer together with everyone listening, I am grateful for every heart that is opening before you right now. We stand in agreement, united in our desire to follow your plan and purpose for our lives. Guide us, Lord, as we navigate through life's challenges and decisions. Help us to embrace your will, overcome our doubts, and find joy and fulfillment in your divine plan. Lord, pour out your Spirit upon us. Fill us with the courage and strength to face whatever lies ahead. May we, like Abraham, trust in your promises, even when they seem distant. Help us to persevere through trials, knowing that you are refining us for a greater purpose. May our lives be a testament to your faithfulness and love. In the name of Jesus, we declare that we walk by faith, not by sight or our emotions. We declare that everything is working for us and not against us. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Let your will be done in our lives as it is in heaven. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forevermore. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, amen.